Once you have the positions marked along the lower edge, it's time to install the twist lock fasteners. This is not included in your kit. This is a common sense hole cutter. Great tool. Just make sure you don't okay. punch through the uh, second layer of material when you do this. We're using the rubber cutting pad on the bottom side to ensure that we don't damage the tool. A couple blows with the hammer and you've got your hole and four slots for those legs. And then install the eyelet. Uh, if you do not have this tool, we're going to show you how to do it with just a standard uh, razor blade here in the next step. Uh, but if you have it, use it. Then bend each one of those tabs over the back plate. We've installed the back plate, bend the, t the tabs over, and once they're bend o bent over slightly, okay, then bend them over all the way. Now we're going to show you how to do it with a Stanley knife. Okay, you can also do this with a Stanley knife if you don't have a punch. Carefully mark each leg with the mark put your blade just inside of the line that you make make sure that it pokes through all the layers inside inside The center hole does not necessarily need to be hot knifed. It will unravel a little bit, but it never goes beyond the actual eyelet. We do recommend, if you do have a hot knife, to uh, uh, put the eyelet on and then use a hot knife just to seal up the edges. But it's, again, not necessary. It just makes a cleaner hole for the insertion of your twist lock. I like to put something in between the cover and the fastener. That way you're not putting marks onto it. Attach the back the same as you did with the other. Now we'll concentrate on the twist lock itself, the stud. She marks the center of the eyelet at each spot. For the lock. Once the center is marked, she'll take the stud and put it on the exact center line of that eyelet. And then she takes her grease pencil and marks exactly where those holes are for the insertion of the button, or what I should call the rivet or barrel of the button. Then uh, we'll take that razor blade again and we'll cut small X's right on top of that uh, mark. Uh, this actually works fairly well. So a little X or a little cross right on top of each one of these uh, holes and then we'll be able to insert the rivet uh, right through there. So now we take the button, insert the rivet through both sides. Another fantastic tool to use is the hole cutter, the 1 8 inch hole cutter for doing these holes. You could probably also do that with an awl. Then once that's done, take the uh, stud, put it on top. on top. And like I said, your kit will come with this little sleeve on top of here, and you just take a pair of pliers and that'll pull off because you want to be able to get close to the lock to set your snaps onto the back. You want to make sure you put this underneath so your caps don't flatten. That piece should have the concave side facing up. doesn't take a whole lot to set them. And here you have the lock. All right, you're done. This sail cover was pretty easy to build, and the instructions are very well done. Shouldn't take you any time whatsoever, and you'll come out with a beautiful sail cover just like this one with twist locks all at the bottom with buttons. Thanks again for watching. I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite.